So, we're going to be talking about another book here, okay? So, that book is actually going to be called The Perfect Ruin by Shinora Williams, okay? All right. So, this right here, The Perfect Ruin. So, this is another book written by a black female author who, which in which it's a thriller, a psychological thriller. Now, the story follows a mid-20s woman named Ivy Elliot. Ivy Elliot is an individual who her past is filled with or has bred a lot of anger within her, a lot of sadness, a lot of frustration, and a lot of bitter, vengeful thoughts. And this has been this has been spurred on by the fact that her parents were killed in in an, an what seemingly is an accident. I think one of the things that the author tried to hedge from deliberately ex, expelling out within the book is what happened to them, their exact fate. But we can sum it up to an accident right now. But the point is that there is an individual who is responsible for this their death, and Ivy taking all of those dark you know energies within her wants to get revenge you know this individual is accountable she is the sort of orbiting force as to why ivy is experiencing all these negative feelings and why her life is not going the way that she wants it to go because she lost her parents to this force that she knows is responsible so ivy takes it upon herself to seek out revenge she doesn't quite know who the individual is that caused her parents death but she does get a tip off and then she subsequently begins to infiltrate um, into this person's life because this person is a woman who is very affluent very elite has her own business and social circle and so it takes ivy coming from sort of the um hmm, i don't know this book this book takes place in uh florida so i think that we're thinking Tampa, Miami to the much more affluent area of Biscayne Bay. Maybe I might be getting that wrong. I'm sorry. I don't, uh, you have to tell me, but the point is that Ivy moves sort of up to catch up with this woman. And like I said, infiltrate her way into her life to start sabotaging certain bits of her life to the point where it it will implode and Ivy will walk away having sought and, and exacted her revenge and for the most part gathered some money or some resources to go about beginning her new life elsewhere. So that is kind of the gist of The Perfect Ruin and so how I want to share my thoughts about this book. So it really is not that hard for me to share my thoughts but I just want to make sure that somebody or I just want to make sure that I am bringing this book up here to talk about the Perfect Ruin was unoriginal, okay? We'll start there. It was not necessarily original. Um, a lot of the stuff, a lot of the things, a lot of the motives or agendas that you would assume Ivy is going to make as you look at the whole, the context of the characters behind the characters themselves, you can see Ivy making her moves 10 to 20 pages before they're actually done. Um, you know, there is the two-faced, uh, two-faced revenge source maybe. You know, the woman Ivy is after, she's nice on the surface, evil behind the scenes. You know, she has her husband who, of course, Ivy is going to try to get into the bed with. You know, she has a circle of friends, some of them jealous, bitter, mean-hearted, mean-spirited, who Ivy can then extrapolate hidden avenues of punishment, you know, towards her, her target. Nothing in the book is quite original not quite original um i was hoping that it would be a book that did sh rattle me and shake me but not quite not quite but i want to say that the thing that i did enjoy the most about the book was actually the voice of ivy and the the book is about 326 pages long so in the first 200 pages you the reader are solely inside of the first person narrative of Ivy and then subsequently after that it begins to shift into another character who I won't reveal for very good reasons and then it flip flops between the two but I enjoy the voice of Ivy the thing is that at the beginning of the book I did not think that I was going to be able to finish the book um for to the, in, in a sense Ivy I found her to be 
insufferable in some places. I had this anticipation that she was going to be a character who was going to at least be multi-layered, but she's not. She is angry. She's bitter. She's frustrated. She's mad. And she curses, 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 curses. There's curses all over this book, which I don't mind, girl. I don't mind. It didn't bother me. That ain't... I won't but give me more. Don't it don't mind. It don't. They don't bother me no whatsoever. Some people it may. I'm sure, but me, I didn't care for it. I didn't. It didn't bother me at all, child. If you knew where I came from, but the point that I'm making is that there is no release or relief from this within the character of Ivy. This is who she is. And so, as I was reading the book, and the more and more I read the book, I realized that Ivy is not going to be a character who progressed, who evolved, who changed. And she was always going to be on this wheel that the author has designated her to be on. And that went on throughout the entirety of the book. The same can be said for all of the characters. All of the characters played their roles to a T. And there was no evolution, no growth, no amending, no moments of tenderness to change one's faith. None of that. These characters were completely locked into the roles that they were given. And like I said, I didn't think that I was going to be able to experience this book wholly through I, through Ivy's perspective. Because I knew that at one point, I already knew that she wasn't going to grow. She wasn't going to change. But the more and more that I read it, the only thing I can say for sure is that I enjoyed the book because it did keep me glued to the pages. It did keep me reading. And although I did not necessarily connect with Ivy's voice... I connected with how the resonance of how the author was determined to draw this character. You know, she did not draw a character who flinched. Ivy was not going to flinch. And so for me, that was like, okay, so that means that this character is willing to go through any length to get what it is that she wants to get done. And so my thought is that, okay, so this book essentially could go anywhere in terms of Ivy seeking revenge. And that's what kept me reading. Although I knew her intentions and her mindset, I couldn't guess what was her next plot point. But unfortunately, as the book progressed, those things, like I said, they became predictable. You sort of kind of got it in terms of her connection with other characters. Like you knew once she connected with, although she had desires for the husband, you knew at one point she was going to use him. You knew she was going to use this character, you know, so forth and so on. But at the end of the day, The Perfect Ruin, I did give about four stars for the simple fact that it really kept me glued. A lot of times I'm afraid of sometimes being bored with books or bored with the voice of characters within books. But Ivy, I, Ivy and even even the further voices that show up within the text, I, 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 I didn't mind. I didn't mind at all. I think it's because, and I think that is because the author was consistent and she was not trying to paint anything other than what it was that we we had with these characters you know she wasn't trying to deviate and do something a lot more I think that was kind of fair for was I think that is kind of a fair assessment as to why I enjoyed the voice of Ivy which of course led me to continue reading the book so the perfect ruin um yeah I ended up giving it about four stars and um I'm so happy that I could buy a book from one of my sisters and show her my support Keep writing books. Keep writing some more books. Actually, could you do me a favor, Miss Williams? Could you write a ser- mystery series for me? <laughs> Look, I'm over here begging and stuff. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I wanted to just make sure that I spoke and shared my thoughts of that book. And, um, you know, I-, I would invite you to check it out. And if you've read it, drop me a comment down below. Peace. I'm about to go eat my don- one of my donuts. Yeah, I see. I showed him in another video. But I'm about to eat one of my donuts. And I'm about to go read another book that I'm excited to be reading and I don't think I'm going to show it here because I don't want to be crossing and overlaying books and stuff you got to put the shine where the shine belongs